Okay, so we're jumping back in and really now we have three objectives. The first is to hunt down every little bit of boost on the planet that we can possibly find because we're in the genuine space race part of the game. So we're going to be grabbing an extra slot in the Eurasian Union to get a greater share of that boost income. We're going after some countries in the Caucasus that have small amounts of boost income. So Azerbaijan has the Baku launch facility, which we're going to try and grab. Um, we are going to keep... Uh, reunifying countries in the area, joining them to the Eurasian Union, because we're going to turn the Eurasian Union into something that's truly great, and most importantly, it brings the American people together to fight short victorious wars overseas. So we're going to be doing that, and then, so that's sort of objective one, get boost. Objective two is unify um, the American population. Objective three is to secure A, more nukes, B, damage uh, the protectorate and servants, and see in that process maybe spread our wings a little bit wider. And to that end, I've noticed that the protectorate um, points in Israel are currently cracked down. We're going for Israel. Israel has a nuclear barrage. Israel has a boost income, a reasonable science income. is pretty cheap to maintain. This will cost us about 15 control points for the entire country. And it's almost finished a point of mission control. So we can turn Israel into a bit of a mission control source while also securing another nuke from the alien lovers. Unfortunately, both the pro-alien factions do have a decent nuclear arsenal at this point. Um, the Protectorate has both Pakistan and India, go figure, which gives them a grand total of four barrages there. The servants have the United Kingdom fully controlled and locked down with like 76% popularity. So they're locked in with two nukes and a navally deployable military with a 4.3 mil tech. So, you know, good luck disarming them. In any case, what I'm doing right now is I'm moving all my troops down. Uh, we're going to uh, unify Georgia into the Eurasian Union, and in so doing, keep driving up this cohesion score of the USA, which will let me save a massive amount of investment on unity, so I can uh, put that right back into uh, the military, knowledge, welfare, and economics, which is where I'd rather the money be going. Let's go. Alright, so we've completed alien operations. Unhelpfully, domestic law enforcement tends to close investigations once abductees return, so it falls to our local operatives to follow up rumours. Yeah, that sounds about right. So take me there. We have completed the research their operations objective. It's now clear that what we are facing is nothing less than an all-out invasion. The aliens have some way of subverting their captives that leaves them under alien control. Now, you might notice that Humanity First is jumping a couple of like points and analysis at this point, but you know, it's Humanity First, um, and they're not necessarily wrong. Countries in which aliens have been active are seeing rapid upswings in pro-alien and collaborationist views, so that would be servants and protectorate. People of influence, politicians, celebrities, media personalities are suddenly changing their views and agitating strongly for pro-alien policies. The process is frighteningly fast. People who oppose the new policies may be fired, imprisoned, or killed. Or they may have a sudden conversion. It's like watching the spread of a cult, except a thousand times faster. We need to stop this, but how? Eliminating the humans who have been brought under alien control is impractical. The contagion spreads far too quickly and widely. What we really need is some way to identify exactly who has been compromised, but it's hard to see how we can do that without being to track alien without having a way to track alien activity. We have activated an alien threat monitor. It is viewable on the alien tab of the Intel screen. So let's go navigate there. All right, so here we are, estimated alien threat level. This panel represents our intelligence section's best estimate about the degree to which aliens regard our faction as a threat. It is based on monitoring pro-alien groups and is visible. We believe hostile actions against the aliens or their proxies on Earth uh, increase their concerns about us, and we may expect the aliens to retaliate against us on Earth or in space should the alert monitor reach the maximum level. They may lose interest if we avoid opposing them or their proxies on Earth directly for a time. Okay, so this is new. Um, the threat mechanic, the hate mechanic as it's called, has always been in the game as I understand, wherein if you provoke the aliens, they come and mess your stuff up. Now there's a little bar that at least provides you a little bit of a clue as to how far you can push them. Ah, uh, well, okay, so we're going to have to be a little more circumspect, except we're not, because we're humanity first. We're going to continue to kick in the teeth of the, um, the servants, the protectorate, every chance we get. Okay, so you may have questions here. Namely, Perun, why did you just coup yourself? You controlled all the control points in Belarus, and all you've done is drive up, uh... 
dissatisfaction in the country for no real gain. Wow, I have done something to cause the sound in the game to go nuts. Let's just... Ah, oh, that'll be white. Right. Master volume down to there. Fantastic. The reason is Belarus starts in the Eurasian Union with Russia, which is now the Eurasian Union. You can't declare war on someone who is in the same union as you, and you can't enter or leave a union until you have consolidated control of the executive. This is one of the changes they made to the game uh, to stop clumping up the EU being so easy and to stop um, dramatic instant diplomatic changes from happening. After you take over the executive, there is a period of time. You can see here there are 63 days remaining before you can do dramatic things, like remove or enter into a union or unify the country. I don't want to wait 63 days. I'm already over my control point cap. Part of that will become better once the people of Georgia finish their well-supervised referendum to join the Eurasian Union. But the other part is Belarus and the Baltic states, both of which are in unions, which make it very difficult for them to, uh, to invade them, essentially. Now... We can rival the Eurasian Union, and that will allow us to move military forces in to peacefully join Belarus into the Eurasian Union relatively soon. Uh, we will repeat this process with the Baltic states, because at the, by this point, Max... I still need to rename my councillors after patrons. I will do it shortly. Uh, Max here is getting very, very good at launching coups. He's at 16 out of 25. We can still... We can, those are still rookie numbers. We can push them higher. But he's getting pretty good at launching coups in countries. And there you go. The administrative reorganization of the states con of the Eurasian Union rather continues. So the Baltic states will now be able to be joined in, as will Belarus. So we'll be able to de uh, declare war between the Eurasian Union and Belarus shortly. Um, the combined Russian American forces have just finished their work in uh, Baku, so it will take them some time to redeploy up. Uh, towards Belarus, but that's okay. It'll also give those units some time to reconstitute. Units repair steadily over time in this game. Uh, I believe they repair quicker in their own territory than in allied territory, so the American units will take a little bit longer to repair. But this giant blob of US troops should be enough to do the job in the Baltic states and Belarus. You know, they're just there to monitor uh, humanity first elections uh, after all. So we might bring one additional US army in. The US is um, at the moment really... Uh, its economic development is a little bit slower than it could be because we're paying upkeep on having all these armies overseas. But we're doing a good job of consolidating the Eurasian Union and bringing ourselves back under our control cap, so I consider it worth it. Um, we've got Israel now humming, prioritised appropriately. Um, it's got I've given it 30% of the economy just to keep things rolling and prevent it collapsing, so it's going to suffer very slow declines in some categories. But that means that 65% of the economy can go into producing mission control, and already... Um, Israel has completed its first mission control point with uh, 6.7 investment points per month and 60% of it going towards that. Let's be really conservative and call that four points per month going into mission control. Um, every six months, roughly, we're going to be producing an additional mission control point, which for the relatively minor investment that Israel represents, I think is a great thing. Plus, it's giving us some science, some money. We've got a nuke in hand. Um, and a nuke in a country that isn't your primary economic source is always useful, although Israel having mission control and boost means it's probably not as useful. The best country on the planet for an emergency nuke is North Korea. Because what you can do, and I'm not sure we'll do this trick, but it's very humanity first, is let's just say the servants dig into, say, China, for example, um, and you're like, ah, that's a problem. What you can do if you absolutely have no other option to dig them out other than nuclear war is you can take over somewhere like North Korea, you can build a second nuke, and then you can fire those nukes at China. China will respond by firing its nukes at North Korea, and this doesn't damage your primary holdings in Russia or Europe or the United States, wherever it is. You can deplete China of nukes, and then you can use the United States military or whatever else you've got in order to try and affect regime change. Just one technique that you can deploy if you have to. Anyway, I'm going to continue this little administrative consolidation, let's call it that, while we continue to drive this boost income up. We're at four per month. I want to get that higher because we're going to need about 50 in order to get our first mine set up on the moon, which should position us well to have resources. We're going to do mission to Mars and we're going to get high-speed probes uh, to do it. But given how long it takes for outposts to get to Mars and how expensive it is in terms of boost, it can actually be worth getting a little bit of resource income happening on the moon quicker so that you can then use those resources rather than having to boost everything from Earth to Mars. So that's my thinking so far. Awesome, let's continue.
All right, great. So that's Ad Astra done. This is a technology that really just unlocks a bunch of other things. So by going to Ad Astra, we can potentially get to orbitals and settlement habs, both of which are very important. Orbitals and settlement habs are your T2 um, orbital stations and your T2 settlements on planets, respectively. Very, very, very important, as is industrialization of space, um, which is also one that we can consider going for. The other thing is we're going to need good engines eventually in order to fight, but at the moment I'm focusing on the industrialization tech. So what is available to us now? Orbitals is available, settlement habs is available, industrialization of space is available. I actually think of all of these, industrialization of space is probably the most important. So I'm going to give it my slot and I'm going to prioritize it. It'll be finished by 26 October 2025. The most important thing about industrialization of space is it gives you construction modules. And once I've unlocked it, I'll talk about how important that is. We're about to have Exodus finish mission to Mars, no surprise. So we'll wait for that to happen. Looks like we've got all these divisions there. Yeah, yeah, so there's the academy. Awesome. Okay, so allow sending pro, pro. I had a request in the comments to look at technologies in more detail and not to skim over them. So, mission to Mars is pretty simple. It allows sending probes to Mars and inner system asteroids. That's key inner system asteroids and Mars. And you can build habitats. It also allows exploration of construction at the Sun Earth Lagrange points and asteroids in the Earth orbital region. The following technologies may now be researched mission to asteroids. So, what you can now do, and what we should do, because I timed it so I uh, got high speed probes right before the technology research, which doubles the speeds of your probes. And remember, you must send a probe to a location before you can settle it. So in 158 days for the cost of 0.5 boost, my prospector probe should get to Mars. My hope is that my thing gets there first. So if there's a particularly plum location on the planet, I will have a lead on the AI in trying to settle it. Um, you can also, sorry, I just reset the view there for a moment. Um, you can also, I believe at this point, start sending probes to asteroids. Or am I wrong about that? I may be wrong about that. Oh, I need mission to asteroids, duh, okay. So that's a thing. Uh, so we're now sending our probe to, uh, to Mars and we've unlocked some more orcs. So one of the researchers you would have seen me push early was arrival economics and then arrival markets. Uh, what those techs do is they cause orgs to spawn and become available for recruitment every month. This is important because by default, you're just going to get the major governments, the big players. If you want more organizations, you're going to need to research technologies that generate them. So for example, Volan's brands here is awesome and I really want to get it. It increases economy, economy, uh, administration and gives me monthly income. So what I really want to do is take someone who I need to be better. Um, so Max here is a good option. There are two that would really benefit from this. Oh, we don't have enough influence. I want to give Max government because once Max has government, he can start racking up a whole bunch of special forces organizations and just become the best murderer on the planet. That'll be really, really good. In the meantime, what I want to do is I tend to use who do I use? Nero the second. What's my, okay, my monthly income is 60, so I'm spending a lot of it on this, but what I'd like doing at the moment is having Nero advise the United States. The United States is so big that any bonuses you can give it sort of matter. So if I give him this, that'll increase his administration cap by one, so he can get that, plus admin is when you're advising the bit that boosts investment points. So really, really, really useful. He already has advise. We want something else that increases like economy or whatever. He doesn't have a huge amount of command. I'm just gonna stack this on him. In terms of what is, so Vincenar is doing a bit of everything, but he's got public campaign already thanks to my org. So we're after something that does, I like this influence income, that's a good thing. He's not particularly good at command. He probably doesn't need assault alien asset and he already has that anyway. So we'll add entertainment onto him. Oh, he's a quick learner too. So he can go at administration one. Um, Viking interactive, push the science up. And we can temporarily put guys on max, I think. 
but really only until we get 100 and then we can get some uh, some military stuff on him instead. But in the meantime, Columbia Investigation will make him better at his purge mission. And this is just a really cheap ops increase. Great. Now, that's a good one. Okay, so this is a 12% space mining output, a 6% boost in economy investment, and a lot more money per month. I'm currently making 300 money per month. That's 60 money per month in terms of income. That's that's big. So who has stuff that isn't particularly useful at the moment that I can pull off? I could potentially... That might be useful. I'm going to juggle here for a moment, and I'm going to try and get Sharka Energy in, because 60 extra money per month is a 20% increase in our net money position, plus a mining bonus, plus a 6% increase. Think about that for a moment, right? That's essentially saying that I'm getting a better return on investment for these economy points here. So I may as well be, for that, at a 6% boost, um, I may as well be spending 29% of US GDP on the economy instead of 28%. doesn't seem like much, but it applies to every country involved. And when you're using economies like the US or China on that scale, those things can add up pretty quickly. So I'm going to do some org, uh, some org juggling. And then I'm going to proceed with the uh, Eurasian Union membership referendum in Belarus, supervised by the United States military. And with that, we are now back underneath the administration cap. So we've consolidated the western flank of the Eurasian Union into the Eurasian Union. Uh, there's probably a little bit more expansion we can do, but we don't want to piss off anyone doing it. But all in all, we've taken the Eurasian Union GDP up above 5.46 billion, uh, 5.46 trillion rather, which is not bad. The GDP is growing in part because we're adding new countries to it. Uh, there is a drift towards democracy, which we will now try and enhance. Really, our problem here is that the resistance is spending their resources on things that are not the advancement of democracy. The economy is growing, uh, the tech level is increasing, inequality is falling. It's just going to take a while for us to turn this into a democratic state. But that's what we're going to have to do, otherwise it would be a betrayal for all the countries that we've incorporated. We're humanity first, we hate aliens and we hate collaborators, but democracy is non-negotiable because it increases science output. Anyway, we're in a good position now. I'm saving up influence because I have noticed, and someone else may grab it first, but the International Monetary Fund is available for purchase. It costs 250 influence, but it's also amazing. It gives you eight administration, 6% economy, welfare, knowledge, spoils. It is just fantastic, and I want it. So that'll take about a month and a half to save for. We're not going to spend any influence on anything else until then. We're just going to shore up our support of our country um, in the Eurasian Union. What we might do, however, is bring the unrest from the incorporated nations down and make sure that we investigate the alien activity. But there we go. A little bit of national consolidation. Our boost income is up. Money income has gone from 300 a month to 440 a month through some ore consolidation and improving the economy. And the United States is also on the up. The problem is we're no longer super, super popular in the USA, and that's because we're no longer using unity in order to push our, um, push our cohesion up. We might still have to do that. Uh, I might increase unity spending to about 7%. That should increase popularity and help hold this number where it needs to be. 4.5 is really good. 5 is ideal. Um, democracy value is increasing. We are now full democracy in the United States, which means science income continues to increase. And once we bring the armies home, which we will do now, the number of investment points available is also going to increase because I think for the moment we're done invading people until I go find a nice servant-occupied country or something like that that needs invading. I'll talk about the strategy on that in a little bit. Is that two alien locations? No, it's just one. I thought it was two alien locations, but it does look like the aliens are starting to be active in China, which is concerning. I don't really have the control point cap to move into China, but I should think about doing so. The Protectorate has India and Pakistan working together. China is a natural next one to secure. Um, if it's not held by anyone I don't like. Otherwise, I will have to pick a good servant or Protectorate nation and go beat it up. Um, 
I'll talk strategy about this a little later. Once we, we've now got what we really needed straight out, we've got the nukes secured. So we've got Russia and the United States secured. The United States is going to be our economic engine. We've secured Israel as sort of our mission control boost spamming um, nation. Small nations like Israel that are rich are very, very good at mission control spamming. So that's what we're going to be using Israel for. The question is, what is the point of getting our next nation? And I'm wondering, it's either going to be a Middle Eastern petro state that we're going to use to generate cash, or it's going to be thinking about the next superpower. So leave it with me and we'll be back soon. And it looks like, and I don't highlight all examples of this, but the AI is much more active than it was in earlier builds. And this is the protectorate. Remember, the surrender monkeys are demonstrating that they understand how the game is played as well. They have a Pakistan which is allied with India, I believe. Um, yep, there we are. So they have a considerable number of armies. They don't all have navies. India only has one navally mobile army. Pakistan has zero. Um, the strike corps from Pakistan is only able to move land province to land province, as are most of India's armies. But they're allied together. They have a bunch of nukes. And what they've decided to do is invade Iran, which is currently controlled by the resistance. This means that the AI will be able to take the armies from India and Pakistan, overrun Iran and continue building this center of power along here. Um, not a bad move, to be frank. Um, and if they ally Iran to the other two, that'll bring it under a nuclear umbrella and make it more difficult to dig them out. The protectorate is also going for Iraq at the same time. So this is a big arc of protectorate power running from the southern tip of India all the way up to Baghdad. Okay, it's time to do a few things in short order. The first is we now have the influence. So Max here, our commando, is going to administer the International Monetary Fund. Why? Because it's going to allow him, once he unlocks government, uh, to accommodate a lot more military organizations, which hopefully bring this command closer to 25. And same with espionage. I want him to just be an absolute murderer. I want him to be able to stage coups just about anywhere. So we won't stack any other organizations with him for the moment. We'll wait for him to have the influence, be government, and we can go from there. Um, the other person who are really stacking up is Nero II because he needs some, as much science, uh, administration, and command as possible because he's giving bonuses to the United States. Speaking of which, we've pushed the United States up in terms of investment points. It's now above 20. I think it's at 21.2, and that's before the advice fires for the turn, which will push it above 22. So this is about a 10% increase in the number of investment points the US has. We've also managed to get its science above 600 once the turn starts and Nero starts advising it, all of which is very, very good. We are going to have to hold up our public opinion here just to keep it stable. And 4.5 is okay. We're just going to have to keep an eye on uh, US cohesion. Anywhere between 4 and 6, I think, is a happy zone. But in general, the US is now going in the right direction. It'll just always show a red arrow at the end of the month, I think, because the advise mission stops. The third thing is we now have 41.4 boost. Now, I have three sites reserved on the moon. The initiative has grabbed one, Exodus has grabbed one, the Protectorate has grabbed one, and the Academy has grabbed one. So just about everyone is involved in the race to the moon. I'm looking at this location here, not because it's necessarily the best. In terms of total resource output, uh, Shackleton Crater and Tycho Crater are both more impressive. 8 is an awful lot of fizzle material, and 23 base metal and 9.9 .9 water is good. But this extra 2.6 volatiles here means that we can do some construction without having to ship volatiles, and that makes sense to me. So we're going to go to Peary Crater, just to make sure that it's the right one. Blackburn Base, great. Uh, and in just a second, we will be able to launch our first mine. I'm going to launch the mine first um, before I launch the power source because the power source will take comparatively less time to arrive. So we're just going to wait for this to tick up to about 4.8. Repeat that. There we are, 4.7 should be enough. Blackburn base, which we will rename shortly, and we're going to send the mining module here. Uh, that'll give us monthly production of uh, water, volatiles, and metal, put it into the positive, and help ease the boost uh, income required in order to support future uh, construction, mostly in terms of finishing the moon. Uh, once we've got the solar collector's 4.9 boost ready to go, we'll launch that as well, and then we're 60 days out from having a functional moon outpost producing at least some materials. Nowhere near as much as what Mars will manage, but it's something. 
Anyway, uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. We're now under the administration cap, so I will pick another country to um, grab shortly. Thinking about where we go there. Unfortunately, the protectorates all put itself under its nuclear umbrella. Um, and I am going to have a closer look at China. Because maybe, just maybe, with a little bit of effort, poking around the edges, Kyrgyzstan is a good one to grab. If I coup Kyrgyzstan, bringing them in would be beneficial because it kicks the servants out and it can just be added to the Eurasian Union. Same, well, Mongolia can't be annexed, but it would put pressure on China. Anyway, there are options here to be sure. Okay, the probe has arrived at Mars and let us have a look. Oh, we have some good sites here. We have some good sites here. Okay, so we're looking for, in terms of standouts, uh, you need a noble metal source. There's a lot of fissiles and nobles at Olympus Mons. Also a lot of volatiles, so that's a good site. Not much water, but that's okay. There are some good water sites, 54 and 60, with volatiles and base metals. Yeah, this, this is a Mars that is good enough to, to do a serious amount about. Now, we need 10.6 boost in order to get here. That is obviously a lot. And before we do anything else, what we need to do is launch to Blackburn Base. But what I'm seeing there is there's a lot on Mars that I'd be happy to use. So as soon as we get to 4.9, we'll launch the power generator here. That'll start to make claiming positions on Mars easier. Um, but we'll also be able to scale up our um, presence on the moon using resources produced on the moon. In terms of nations that I'm grabbing, I've decided temporarily to go for Iraq. Um, Iraq is relatively cheap to hold. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to spoil it for a while just to generate a lot of money. Uh, it's a oil country, produces a lot of income on spoils. Just going to do this in the short term for a couple of months just to build up a little bit of bank. Then I'm going to abandon it um, and move on to another country which is a little more productive. I'm still considering grabbing maybe one or two points in China or starting to throw the servants out of their base in the UK because seeing them with a military and with nuclear weapons just concerns me a little bit. So throwing the servants out of the UK could be in our best interests. If we abandon Iraq and continue scaling our admin capacity and we finish management research for the second time, which we should soon, uh, that'll be the last time I ever research management research, then maybe, just maybe, we can secure the UK and that would be a good step. I would go for France. France has a lot of boost income, but I don't want to mess things up with Project Exodus. I like Exodus being strong. I have a non-aggression pact with them, so I'm going to leave them be. Oh wow, the AI's actually done it. The AI has founded the European Union. Well, there you go, under Project Exodus. Well, three of the four control points. So Sweden and France have unified into the EU. That's actually pretty impressive. Now we'll see if... Because that'll free up some control points for Exodus, which means they'll be hunting for more CPs. I do wonder if that means the AI is now smart enough. I'm not sure if they've got a non-aggression pact. Uh, to go for the initiative slot in Spain, because if so, they can join Spain into the EU as well. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm kind of impressed with that. I mean, I would like to have the EU myself, but I'm very happy for Exodus to have it, and that is a nice move. Well done, AI. I'm, in I'm impressed with how much the AI has improved since the early iterations of the beta. Very, very, very cool. Meanwhile, the US... Apart from the fact that we're trending towards polarization again, we're still very much in a safe range, but everything else is going well. Research is through the roof. Democracy is increasing, increasing relatively rapidly, in fact. Uh, inequality is diving. So every month, every year, we should be decreasing inequality by about 0.3, which means... Within a year or two, we should have the U.S. at a low level of inequality, and that helps increase uh, national cohesion. is good for a bunch of other things. And we're doing it at the same point as we are now got the economy back into growth. Awesome. This is a good place to be. And we've launched the solar panels to Blackburn Base, so our first mine is about a month away. All right, so one comment I noted on a previous video, uh, which I should get better at, is people asking about techs. 
Um, there are a lot of things in Terra and Victor because I played the demo and the beta that I just do without thinking about, and that includes aligning research with key breakpoints. Uh, the example here, which I've done basically without thinking, is nuclear freighters. Nuclear freighters is an example of a project that is important at a certain stage, useless beforehand, but necessary past a certain point. What it does is it reduce, uh, increases the speed of HAB module delivery by 18%. So that is, if you're shooting a colony station to another planet, it gets there 18% sooner. That's good. The real important bit here is reduces boost use for sending material beyond low Earth orbit. Basically, the idea here is that you're launching stuff into orbit using your Soyuz rockets or whatever you happen to be using, and then a... A uh, spaceship which is already in orbit, which isn't modeled, it's done in the background, with uh, much more efficient nuclear engines is going to freighter that cargo to wherever it's going. Uh, this reduces the cost of sending stuff beyond LEO. Particularly important if you're going to start setting up a whole bunch of bases on Mars or asteroids or things like that. So I've got nuclear freighters set to research by July of next year. That'll coincide with the point where I start getting the boost in the technology and the fission reactors and everything to start getting set up on Mars properly. I found that with all the nerfs and changes to the game, I think the goal for settling Mars has moved back a year. But as people learn the game again and learn to optimize, um, we can probably do better. But for now, this is an example of a breakpoint break point technology. There are two ones of these in the early to early middle game. Now, I'm just going to call it early game. Everything before you get seriously into space in Terra and Victor is the early game. It's just the early game runs for several hours. Um, interplanetary rocketry, which is the first one which gives you a reduction on cost for moving beyond LEO and nuclear freighters. I think I've got those names right. But that's just an example of a tech that is important at a certain breakpoint. I will try to do more of calling these out as I research them. The tech tree as a whole is huge and it would require several dedicated videos to talk through all of it and all of the strategies involved in what you pick at what time. I'm going to run a strategy that I broadly know. It's not optimized, but it I know that it will, should broadly work. Um, and in subsequent playthroughs, we'll try something different. But anyway, there it is. Nuclear freighters in research should be done by July. Economy is roaring. The money from Iraq is coming in nice and quickly. Um, it is damaging the country and it is causing global warming. But as you can see, my money is just going through the roof right now, which helps a lot. Okay, I think I've spotted a target of opportunity. Pakistan currently has very high unrest, low democracy, um, because it's gone into a war which causes some unrest naturally. So we're in a situation where I can actually throw a coup at the country, which is important because it's now gone into federation with India. I don't like that. I'd like to kick it out of its federation with India. But what we can do, even if we can't hold Pakistan, and we probably can't, is we can go in, we can disarm its nukes, maybe even disband its army, and then bail. If the protectorate takes it back, they're down to half of the nuclear weapons that they had before, which I think is for the better. Um... Yeah, no, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's confirm that. And then hopefully it works. Building up loyalty. Come on, roll the dice. Bit nerve-wracking, but we're almost there. Uh, I'm not going to continue doing that because the servants are doing a very good job of containing public opinion there. Wonderful. Okay, so we are temporarily over limit, but that is okay. We have thrown the protectorate out of Pakistan. I'll take it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to control nation twice to try and get full control of that country just briefly, briefly enough to disband those nukes. Okay, so here's a nifty little technique, by the way. I'm not actually going to go into control nation. Instead, I'm going to set a trap. If you think the AI is definitely going to try and take control of the nation back, which the protectorate almost certainly is, they've got a lot of public support in this nation. We know for a fact they wanted it before, which is why they took it over. And, and they now have capacity for sure because we've freed up their governing capacity by taking these points away from them. So it's reasonably, we can be reasonably confident they're gonna hit Pakistan again. So one way to make this hell for them is to let them take these points over because those should complete relatively quickly. And then we're just gonna stage a second coup. We're gonna counter coup ourselves. So what will happen is the protectorate should come in, take these points, and then the coup should fire and throw them out again. But we're also adding an extra sort of, um, 
Complicating factor. We're putting someone on surveil in Islamabad, which means hopefully the protectorate agents will arrive and be ID'd um, by our Investigation 9 judge. This should give us eyes on and potentially allow us to detain or assassinate or just do bad things to them next turn. Maybe hostile take over their orgs. Um, IDing enemy counsellors is always useful. So that's what we're going to do. Well, it was a good plan, but we didn't manage to catch anybody. We've set the control points back to here, um, so we do need to take control of the executive, and then once we've consolidated, we can get rid of the nukes and possibly the army. Um, but we didn't catch any protectorate agents, unfortunately. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so we can do that. But I think right now we want to finish these researches first. Then we want to get the one that lets us track aliens. It looks like Exodus, like I said, they love the Mission 2 missions. Well, they're going mission to asteroids, which is going to be a real bonanza for industrial expansion. 70% um, popularity in the United States. Very, very good. Let's just see if we get Pakistan. And if so, we're going to partially disarm the world. And there you go, nationally. Uh, I did civilian photonic computing. The computing line is important to eventually getting towards the tech that let you get another agent, um, plus a 5% boost to investment in the economy. So there you are. Oh, and it gives a marginal boost to control points. So this one's actually worth doing if it's costed right. Let's see how much it costs. Um, to do civilian photo Now nah, it's too expensive. I, I did um, ask a while back to see whether or not that would be uh, reduced in cost. As it is, no, it's a late game project. I did the underlying technology, the science research, to get us closer to getting another agent, but I won't do the project just yet. It's too expensive. So there we are. Okay, we've got Pakistan. We are over capacity. We are bleeding influence. That is okay. We're going to pull our army out of Iran by pulling Pakistan out of the... Ha! Huh, India has declared a rivalry with Pakistan. This gives me an, okay, so, 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 so. I'm going to think about this. I'm not going to do this this episode, but one thing we could do, one thing we could do is if the AI has taken India and made it, and made it rivals of Pakistan, one thing we could hypothetically do if we wanted to dig the protectorate out of India is we could start a war between Pakistan and India. That would allow us to do a limited nuclear exchange. We could fire one of Pakistan's nukes at this army, they'd return fire, we could fire in turn, and then once everyone was out of nukes, you could bring the United States or some other power in to clean up. Just a humanity first style thought. Okay, so a few things have happened, so I thought I'd check in before I chop this video and maybe start on the next one. The first is we now have full control of Pakistan. We have set the defense, um, defend interest position. We brought unrest down, so we should be relatively dug in for the moment. I'm about to go adjust their priorities. In fact, let me do that now. We're not going to spoil it, although we might have to a little bit in order to protect it. Uh, we are not going to build a replacement army or new nuclear weapons. That is never a good idea. We are probably going to finish the space program. We're not going to upgrade the military. We're not going to do any more unity. What we are going to do is knowledge, economy. We're going to finish the space flight program. That seems like a good idea. Um, and we're going to do welfare spending. So we're just going to even out Pakistan a little bit, stabilize it for a while. This might be coup vulnerable with the low spoils focus. Um, but how much do they require? They require, yeah, I'm not giving them 54%. I'm going to hold on to Pakistan. If they coup it, we'll counter coup it. That's our strategy at this point. Um, so what I was saying before, and please remember, this is a video game. One thing you can do is you can take a nation you don't want destroyed, um, and in this case, we could go to war with India, we could do the limited nuclear exchange, both sides would have um, two nukes each, so you'd have four weapons exchanged, you could try and fire them so you don't hit any regions with core economic regions. Those are the regions that if they're destroyed, they do great damage to the global economy. So you'd have a limited nuclear exchange, then you invade India, preferably doing as little damage to it as possible. You might even lure the Indian troops into Pakistan, launch the nukes into one of the border regions there in order to limit damage. Um, unfortunately, Pakistan's got a lot of development in its border regions, but you know, Karachi maybe? This sounds, this sounds terrible, but we're playing humanity first. The reason I don't think we should do this is because, one, it would just free up control points for the protectorate to spread elsewhere, and two, I would like to control India in that scenario at the end of it and then rebuild it. The problem is we have nowhere near the 
uh, 100, uh, 100 odd control points that we would need. We would save 30 by shedding Pakistan, but we'd be 70 short. So we're a fair way off being able to control India as well. Unfortunately, I've already hit abandon on Iraq to get myself under control. So I think we need a little bit more management capacity before we consider going into India and throwing the protectorate out, but there might be a point where we have to do it. But we'll do it if we do eventually, I mean, people can comment, but we want to do it in a way that does as little damage to India, the country, as possible, because all we want to really do is throw out these protectorate idiots, the ones who love the aliens. We don't have a problem with the Indian people, we just have, well, we could convince fit the 56% of them to support the protectorate that, to change their mind, but um, we would want India's resources for ourselves. India is doing good research output. The economy and inequality have clearly gone down under the protectorate because they're not investing in the economy or welfare. They're investing in spoils. They're investing in the military, uh, boost missing control. They're building new armies and navies. So we need to keep an eye on this. Uh, the more of those they build, the harder it is to take over the country. But if you drop all of America's military on the capital straight away, well, then you have a chance. So Mumbai has got a core economic region. New Delhi, unfortunately, um, is inland, so you can't just coastal drop on it. We'd have to probably land in, we'd have to land in Kolkata and then move inland towards New Delhi, which would be a little bit difficult. But anyway, that's a potential solution. I've also completed nuclear freighters, which means we have a couple of options. Um, the cost to send stuff out to Mars is now much, 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 much lower than it was. Um, I think before it was more than 10 in order to build an outpost, it's now 5.1. So we have two options. We can either use the reduced cost in order to build more mining on the moon, in order to get more base material production going. So we've got monthly incomes of all of these, which saves us a little bit of boost. Or we can use the boost that we have now to move towards getting production going on Mars, where the yields are going to be much better. I think that's what I want to do for the moment. Getting this one up was great. It significantly reduces the boost cost of getting the first mines up on Mars, but I think colonizing Mars is the way to go. And in particular, I need to get noble metal production and volatile production going, and I want to do it in one mine. So yes, I have not that much water income, but I'm kind of thinking that Olympus Mons might be a good candidate. It's Olympus Mons because it's got the fissile income, it's got noble income, it doesn't have much water, but that's okay, I think. So if we found an outpost on Olympus Mons, it will get there in 235 days. So we found outpost. Now, how much is it going to cost us? Okay, we can launch an outpost mining complex out there. It'll get there in 265 days. Now, that's going to take nine power. We can wait to unlock fission reactors, or we can try and launch three of these power reactors right now. I think that's what we do. So there we are. In 235 days, we will have our first mine going on Mars. I'm considering even getting another one going as well. But for the moment, that should be that. So there we are. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to stop there for a moment. I'm not sure if this is a shorter episode or a longer one. I feel like it's a shorter one. But what have we accomplished? Um, first of all, Eurasian Union, much stronger than it was. Um, and it's coming together a l like reasonably well. I think we're going to have to increase spending on, take some away from the economy and increase spending on knowledge even further to keep this democracy level ticking up. I'd like it to be moving faster. But the country is in reasonable shape. It's produced some mission control life is okay. I might take away some mission control funding from here in order to produce more democracy output. Um, Israel has become a pretty productive member of the team already. It's at two mission control. It's about to complete a third point in a month, um, which means at this point it's going to be producing half what the Eurasian Union does for a fraction of the cost, and it's going to be able to keep producing it. So I do think maybe we take, after this mission control point is finished, we take focus away from the Eurasian Union and shift it towards Israel there. The United States is coming along very nicely. Inequality is falling. The GDP is increasing. Um, science input, uh, output is through the roof. Knowledge output is increasing. The cohesion levels are increasing. Democracy levels are increasing. Miltech is increasing. Life is good for the United States. Um, we basically fixed the United States 
initial problems and we've got it going on the right trajectory. This is going to become our economic base. It produces the vast majority of our science output, for example. Uh, we still get most of our science from nations and by far the majority of that comes from the United States, so there we are. Um, I'm not sure if I want to keep building that army or not. Eventually I want the United States to have another army. It's currently got six. Um, I would like it to have seven and then to build a navy. All good so far. We staged a bit of a blow to the Protectorate by throwing them out of Pakistan. This denies them two nuclear weapons and now means that India, instead of expanding into Iran, now has the problem of a nuclear armed Pakistan held by us on its doorstep. Um, and then we research nuclear freighters. We have mining production going on the moon. I will start renaming these relatively soon. And we've got our first base thrown out to Mars. I do in fact think that I can probably even go so far as to claim a second site, which would be pretty cool. Um, the more I can develop Mars, the better. Concentrating production on Mars may not be the most efficient in terms of yields, but it means that when it comes to defending locations, I would like to have maybe one Mars fleet, an Earth fleet, and then eventually a real prize, which would be to set up station around Mercury. Spreading out to all those asteroids is a really good strategy um, and something that Exodus is leaning towards very, very quickly. But it does mean defending them later on might be difficult, whereas having one fleet to defend Mars sounds like the sort of thing I can do. I'm not sure what the second location I pick on Mars will be. Um, this 7.1 fissile income here is very attractive, for example, plus it has a little more income of everything else. Um, the volatile income up here is probably good for construction, but monopolizing the production of fissile materials. So if I manage to get all of the sites at the primary bodies that produce fissiles, I've already grabbed the one on the moon. If I get the ones here on Mars as well, I might be able to lock some of the AI factions out of building many nuclear reactors, and that's the key to being really efficient in space. That'd force them to either trade for it, buy it from Earth and boost it into orbit, or to go out to asteroids. Not sure which one the AI would pick. Anyway, I think that's enough progress for one episode. I'm going to get this edited and posted. See you all soon.